Hello and welcome to part five of the Bungalow architectural rendering tutorial series. This is David Ward. When last I left you, we had created the trim for the doorway, the front door, and then all the windows. Um, so now I'd like to keep going with that technique and put the trim around all of the doors, door openings and uh, hallway openings and things like that. Everything that has uh, an emptiness divider between the two walls. So all that being said, let's get started. Um, like I said in part four, to duplicate an item and maintain its editability throughout all of the items, uh, you just hit Alt D instead of Shift D. So we'll move that into place. And let me turn my screencast keys back on. Right there. I thought they were still on, but I guess not. Okay, so now we've got the front door duplicated over here. But it's a little too narrow, so I'm going to scale it in object mode on the X axis to about like so. Put it right there around that door. It doesn't need to be quite so wide. Like so, I'm going to move it over. About like so. Okay. So there we go. Easy as pie. Let's do the same thing around all of the openings. Some of them are quite a bit different uh, sized. So just Alt D, duplicate that. And I'm going to hit Alt S to clear its scale. Because we're in object mode, we can do that. So I'm going to scale it a little more narrow here for the entry into the dining nook, the dinette area. Good to go. So, let's do it over to the little hallway. Rotate it 90 degrees. Uh oh, what happened? 90 degrees, there we go. And it looks like it needs to be a little more narrow still. About like so. Good. All right. So now, hopefully, we have our <laughs> our three different sizes of doorways. Um, let's keep on going. Let's grab the one to the dinette area. Shift D. Oh, I keep hitting Shift D. I'm so used to hitting Shift D. It's Alt D. There we go. Drag that down. And looks like that one's a little too narrow. Let's go ahead and delete that. And we'll select the one we did here. Alt D. It's a little more narrow. Maybe that's more universal. Yeah. There we go. So this will be all the bedroom doors and the bathroom. So Alt D, just rotate that 90 degrees, plop that into place. Bathroom, or excuse me, closet door over here. Even narrower still. There we go. And then Alt D. Looks like the, this must be the master bedroom, 10 by 8 versus 12 by 9. No, they're about the same size. This one's actually a little smaller. But the doorway to the closet is a little wider. Let's Alt S, scale that out, clear the scale anyways, and then we can scale it back down to fit where it needs to be. Okay, so let's see what else we got here. We've got this big opening here and then this opening here. So we'll grab this one here, Shift D, excuse me, Alt D, duplicate it over. It's got a little more narrow, drag it into place. There we go. And then we have this big opening here. We'll just duplicate this guy, Alt D. It probably needs to be a little wider even. So let's rotate that 90. And yep, it's going to be a little wider. So I'll tell you what, the wider we make that, the more skewed it's going to look. As you can see, um, the top is you know maintaining its size from the original, but the 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 sides are getting wider. And it's not really that noticeable, but the wider the opening gets, as you can see, we zoom in here the more noticeable that becomes. Like, why are these so much wider than the top? So, uh, after I get this all situated, um, what I'd like to do is go ahead and separate these two in, into their own objects. Instead of being instances, they'll be their own. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and, you know, put the texture maps on everything as well. So we'll just, we'll, we'll do that in a, a future part. Um, and, uh, That'll be, you know, after we get all the texture mapping and everything done. Okay, so it looks like we have, well, we need the outer door here. And I think that's the last one. So it's probably about the same size as the front door, hopefully. So we'll just Alt-D, duplicate that over, rotate it 90 degrees. And it looks like it's a little smaller because it's not the main front entryway. So we'll just scale that 
so it fits a little bit better. About right there. And looks like it needs to be a little more this way. There we go. Okay. Now, we have our doorways and, and our walls are all connected. You can't really tell that they're, they're separated between the front and the back, unless you look at it from the top, which we won't be doing. There will be a ceiling there. But if you wanted to do a walkthrough through here, you could, but you wouldn't be able to really tell much detail because it's kind of flat shaded. Everything's gray. There's not a lot of shadows. There's not any shadows, actually, so... You couldn't really tell where you're going. So if you wanted to view it a little more naturally, we could go over here to our GLSL shading and then go to Material View. And that'll go from this spotlight here. Actually, it's point light. Let's go Control Down, get out of that zoom in. And then I'll go to my lamp settings. And let's change that to a sun lamp. So it's pointing from one direction. So we'll just have it coming from the front of the house, sort of. And we can change this later on once we actually get the house, you know, the lighting and everything ready to start working on. So it's going to be one bright shadow, which is still not that easy to see. I mean, once you get in there, you can kind of see it, but it's either black or white almost. So we want to add another lamp, most likely. So we'll shift, actually, uh, let's go shift S, say cursor to center. Then I'm going to put my cursor up here above. So it's centered up. Oh, and one thing, oh yeah, the front of the house is at the front of the scene there so if I want it centered over the house I have to do, the, do that okay so now we can go shift a and add in a lamp and I'm gonna put in a hemi lamp so this is a lamp that it doesn't throw any shadows at all so it's it's kinda like cheating uh, with the ambient occlusion which you can turn it on and see it here in the viewport if you turn that on let's see where's the option ambient occlusion but once you go into game engine if we were in the game engine you wouldn't be able to see all those shadows and everything so this is just for visualization. So it works for now. So we'll go to hit the 5 button, and then I believe it's Shift F. We can start controlling this just like a video game. It's WASD on your keyboard, or the arrow keys also work. So this will give you an idea. You can walk into the house and take a look around. So I'll tell you what, let's make that full screen. And to get rid of that, Tab and T to get rid of that. So now Shift F. And we'll go in and look around. Let's do the front door. Uh, it's the bedroom, or excuse me, the living room. Come down here. There's the hallway. Here's the bathroom. Looking in, looking out the bathroom window. Come through, and there's a bedroom. Looking good, looking good. Another bedroom. There's a closet. Where's my coat? I don't know. We're in a bungalow. Hopefully, we're on the beach, so we don't need a coat. Okay, and then this kitchen. Now, everything looks really small and really crowded, but that's. I mean, it might be that way in real life, but it wouldn't really look this way in real life because, um, I mean, our eyes can see a lot bigger view than what we're looking at here. So if we wanted to see a bigger view, just hit Escape, and we hit the button in button to bring up the Properties panel, and we can roll up here to the view, and right now the lens is at 35 millimeter. So if we wanted to go out a little bigger to see our view a little bit more, I'll tell you what we can do. If you're used to first-person shooter games, I myself am a fan of Call of Duty, as you might have seen on my channel a couple of videos from that. You can change the viewport, actually the camera, if we look through the camera, grab that, control zero. Uh, and you can also shift F while you're looking through the camera. And it'll control the camera instead of where you're looking. And if you just click out, it'll reset it. So if you wanted to change the field of view in your camera, you just select your camera, go to the camera settings, and right now, uh, it's set to millimeters, but if you want to, that's like the the lens setting. If you had a camera and you, you know, one of those SLR cameras where you can change out the lenses, the default lens is a 35 millimeter, and that's kind of default in real life as well. That's kind of the lens 35 millimeter camera. But I think that has to do more with uh, the film itself rather than the lens. But in any case, it's based off of 35 millimeters. So if we wanted to go to field of view, like in video games, you can see the field of view is 49. It's like 50 degrees. That's not even like an Xbox on Call of Duty. You're locked at 65 degrees. This is a lot less than that. So it's like you're lo looking at it through binoculars or a scope or something. So if we set that up to 65, you get to see a little bit more. I'm a PC gamer, so I like to keep mine around 90. So let's see what this looks like full screen at 90 degrees. So let's get that camera centered up a little bit better. Maybe zoom a bit. Shift F and then we can 
zoom in here and everything looks quite a bit bigger because we can actually see more of it instead of being zoomed into one spot so it's a little more you know if we actually get up to where we'd actually be if we were walking through here you can see it looks a little bit better so once we get the doors on here we can start putting the textures on the walls and the carpet or or hardwood floors whatever you want to put in there's that weird area there but uh, yeah we can use the ambient occlusion here while we're visualizing it like this but if we were to go into the game engine I do believe that would disappear but in any case we can use it here so I'm gonna go ahead and save that all right okay so uh, what should we do now what should we do now let's go ahead and like I said in part four let's grab our door way and add a door to it so I'm gonna tab into edit mode there and you can see it goes into edit mode over all of our doorways actually it doesn't over here those must have been instant or uh, sh duplicates instead of instances I think I hit shift D instead of instead of uh, alt D but uh, in any case at least all of those are <laughs> alt deed okay so no big deal we just have to duplicate it over the, the door itself once we get it built so the front door if we look at our photograph of our little house we're working on it's real fancy it's got a lot of panels and everything but I'm not gonna go with this front door uh, I mean I might later on but for right now to make the door for all the rooms in the house I'm going to go with just a standard six panel door I don't know if they had those in the 40s but that's what I'm gonna put in here so we'll go to our front view and shift s cursor to selected and tab in edit mode there and I'm gonna go shift a and we're gonna add in a plane and rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis there we go and let's just scale it up until it fits that doorway so right there all right that one back there is kinda get in there just look at this diagonal line here you can see where the edge of this door is so we're all good okay so let's scale on the z-axis and then kinda move it down into place z-axis there all right so now I want to add the six panels so to do that I need to add let's see I'm looking at my bedroom door now our office door uh, so that's one two three four so it needs to be divided four times like so. So it'll be a panel here, a panel here, and then we'll add one, two, three, four, five, six divisions this way. Two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? One, two, three, four. Yeah. So there we go. All right, so now we just need to arrange it a little bit better. So let's grab the center ones, scale it on the x axis a little bit smaller, and then we'll grab these outer ones scale those a little bigger and then this will be the top panel which is more of a square do that and then grab this middle panel which will be more of a rectangle with just a little bit of divider between it so and then one two three four five six I got one more divider than I need so I'm gonna get rid of that edge loop grab the bottom here drag it down and you can get an idea of what this is going to look like now. Okay, so let's tab back into solid view, tab into edit mode there, and let's grab each one of those panels. And I'm going to extrude it in a little bit. I'm going to hit Alt S, so I'm scaling along its normals, wanting to make it a little more narrow, but it's only going in and out, isn't it? So let's do this. Let's go to uh, right now it's uh, pivoting around the rotation scaling so I'm gonna set that to be individual origins so each one of these is going to scale on itself each face is gonna scale itself so like so So just scale it down like so okay now these square ones are good but these rectangular ones are a little off I want them to be a little taller I want the, the border around them to be even so I'll just go like so there we go and then we can select those top two again and then we will extrude outwards this time and then do the same thing scale it down 
And then, again, same thing, scale the triangles a little bit taller. Okay, so now we have a nice six panel door. However, it's only on one side, so we obviously need to control L. Let's go to our top view. Let's drag it out here in the open. And I'm going to shift D, duplicate it, rotate it 180 degrees, drag it up on the Y axis now, about like so. All right. And I'm going to select the edges of one of them. Oops. Like so. Just one of them. And we'll go to our top view again and extrude out on the Y axis until we meet up with that other side. Make sure it's right on there. It's a little too far. Oops. So right there. Then we can select everything and hopefully we can go remove doubles and remove 24 vertices. So that's, now we have a solid door. Okay. So let's select our solid door, go to our top view, and drag that into place here in the middle. Boom. So there we go. So now we have a door. Yay! And a door in here. Let's go to our perspective view so we can see a little better. And everywhere that was connected with this front door, as far as the um, instance thing is concerned, has a door on it now. And that's fine and all, but uh, this doesn't need a door and this doesn't need a door and really I don't know if we need any doors into the kitchen either those should probably just be openings so once we get everything texture mapped and everything we can uh, edit those to not have a door in them but for now I'll tell you what I'm gonna do tab back in into mode on our front door here and I'm going to shift D to duplicate it go ahead and click now we have the mesh right on top of itself it's no big deal just drag it out if you want to and hit the P button to separate the selection. Boom. Okay. And you see it only made the one copy because that's the only one I was messing with. But now I can drag this over here. And all the doorways that we messed with that don't have a door in there, I can now put that in there. And we will tab into edit mode and just scale it a little more narrow until it fills the area there. Okay. And it doesn't matter this way because these types of doors, the, it doesn't have to be square at the top. Once they get more narrow, they kind of squish together. So that's fine. Okay, so now, since everything's a duplicate of this, or excuse me, an instance of this, once I connect this one to it, I just select the door first, shift select the frame, and hit control J. Boom, it adds a door to all of those openings. So there we go. All right, so that's uh, that's it for part five, I think. We got all our doors on our doorways. So we'll just need to, in part six or part seven, depending on how far it is, I think part seven, or part six, we'll go ahead and start adding the window uh, panels and panes, window panes, and get those looking all nice and fancy. And then maybe av uh, after that, we can actually start texture mapping, and then we'll get in and uh, take the doors out of the doorways we don't need them in and things like that. So. Uh, we'll also need to add in a doorknob, most likely, but again, we can mess with that after after a bit. So, that's going to be it for part five. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in part six. Let's save that.